Hello, my name is Aidan Quinn. If you're like most people in this country, at one time or another, you probably had a dog or a cat that you really cared about, that brought a little joy, a little happiness into your life. But unfortunately, not all relationships between people and animals turn out so well. What you're about to see tells the true story of America's love affair with pets. People of all ages and walks of life find puppies and kittens charming and irresistible. And why shouldn't they? More than half of the households in America have at least one dog or cat. Dogs and cats are big business. People are spending $5 billion annually on pet food, which occupies more space than baby food in supermarkets. Specialty items such as pet necklaces and clothes are increasingly in demand. Pet shops thrive in every community. On the surface, things look wonderful. Yet all is not well in America for cats and dogs. 10 to 15 million unwanted animals, dogs and cats, kittens and puppies, are euthanized by humane societies and pounds every year. And still the puppy mills prosper, the backyard breeders prosper, the pet industry prospers, and 10 to 15 million dogs and cats must be killed because there aren't good homes for them every year. Basically, we have a bad attitude toward animals. We buy them, we sell them, uh, we dispose of them, uh, we talk about them as things. We're into marketing animals, making people feel good, human-animal companion bond, animals are vitamin pills for us. And in the meantime, the consequences of irresponsible people getting pets, simply because they can plunk a few bucks down on a counter and pay good money for a pedigree, uh, we have to respond to. It's, uh, it's a very sad situation, but it's a real one and we have to deal with it. Certainly we are a throwaway society at the present time. We didn't used to be. And I think people have been encouraged and have certainly responded to the encouragement to, to buy things, to use them, and to throw them away, and not encouraged to use them again, to recycle them, to think in terms of buying something to last a long time. They've been encouraged to buy things, use them, and, and throw them away, because that apparently spurred our economy. People have a tendency to think of themselves as disassociated from the rest of the planet. And therefore, they think that uh, dogs and cats and other things belong to them by right, that they can do whatever they want with the trees, the, the streams, the, the animals, the other animals that are in this world, and they don't see the connection that every part of this planet has a role to play, and that every part is to be respected, and if it isn't respected, then it throws the whole out of kilter, and you have a mess. And how bad that mess gets depends on how this lack of respect is manifested and how great this lack of respect is. And I think it's quite great at this time. Quite great. Uh, we're a society that doesn't think a lot about tomorrow. We, we, we tend to think a lot about today. Uh, what will satisfy me uh, pleasure-wise today? Um, that's why we're having uh, globally uh, ecological disaster uh, all around us. And what we have to do is try to remind people that they must think about tomorrow and the future. That rather than being the owners and the masters, they should be the stewards. Um, that these are sentient creatures, that they have an obligation, a responsibility. That the issue isn't just being uh, kind to animals. Uh, the issue is having a commitment, uh, is having a responsibility toward animals that we take within our sphere of influence. 
We know that most Americans love animals. Yet a typical afternoon at an animal shelter reveals a grim scenario. Why is it that you're bringing this animal back here? Uh, I uh, signed a contract with a company that uh, I'll be on the road a lot, and I can't take care of him. I can't leave him alone. And he's nine months old, and I got him for about six months. And uh, I think it's unfair. You know, I just, I just can't leave him alone. I can't t travel with him. Why did you uh, get him in the first place? Uh, I had a cat for 12 years, and I, I lost her. And that's why I got him, to fill up my, you know, have somebody in the house with me. We have to see them in the cages, the people that leave them don't have to see that and that's the you know that's what gets me we see them get depressed we see them not eat um, people think that they don't feel it but believe me an animal knows when it's been done it knows it because my roommate and I are never home and I feel bad for her that she's by herself all day in this dark apartment with no light and when we travel you know we try to get neighbors to come in and feed her and there was one time when I was out of town and I told my roommate and she stayed at her boyfriend's for three days and the cat wasn't fed and that is just so cruel to me. So we had her for a little over a year and it just, you know, our, our schedules are just not good for, for raising a cat. Every excuse under the sun, allergic, moving, you know, basically I think what happens is people just get tired of taking care of an animal or their children come first or their lives get too busy and the animal gets dumped. That's the, the end result. The majority of the people uh, that bring animals in are people who don't seem to realize the responsibility of pet ownership. And they take on an animal that they're not ready for or other members in the family are not ready for. And uh, as long as it's a cute puppy or kitten, it's fine. As it starts to become a problem, they no longer want it. We have animals coming in here 24 hours a day. And the amount of animals that get, get homes is nothing compared to the amount of animals that come in. Because I think people are really undereducated about what animals need. It's, it's my mother's dog. And she wanted to uh, turn it in because the dog was being neglected. And we didn't have time for it. That's about it. Why did you get the dog in the first place? Well, it was a gift. They gave it to my father, and um, they thought we'd be able to take care of it. But as it turns out, you know, we were much too busy. What goes through your mind now that you have to turn the dog in? I feel bad because it's been with the family for a while. You know, the kids really got attached to it. But, um, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? We have 750 cage spaces in our two full-purpose shelters. Last year, the public brought to us close to 80 thousand animals for those 750 cage spaces. So if we can't find a good responsible home, um, we have to in fact take the life of an animal with no pain at all. And the beat goes on and the euthanasia solution gets made and now the shelters are killing instead of 10 to 15 million a year, maybe 15 to 20 million. The millions of dogs and cats killed in shelters every year are the ones we can count. How many millions of others die in the streets and backyards of our towns and cities? We don't know. Abandonment seems to be slightly on the increase. Uh, I don't know whether it's the uh, lifestyle that people are into now where, or the drug problem where they're they have no re lack of responsibility, little responsibility, or no responsibility. They, they think nothing of uh, dumping the animal. For some foolish and stupid reason, they think the animal can survive on his own, and he can't. The worst thing you can see is someone throwing a cat or a dog out of a car, and you could see a dog running after the car and for miles and miles, and then knowing that uh, the, 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 there's no one there to take care of them, and they start to, 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 to roam the streets, if it's in a city or if it's in the... Uh, suburban areas in the woods and maybe they eventually become wild animals and so on and so forth and uh, they uh, it's harmful to the animals and it, it actually harms the populace that, that live in the particular areas. I get up in the morning early I get up at four o'clock every morning you see dogs